members of our board of directors joining us today. So I'd like to welcome them and if, uh, read them out. If you guys will hold your applause, please. We have our chairman, John Esposito, President Sally Williams, President-elect Bill Simmons, Jim Beavers, Rob Beckham, Terry Colon, Pat Collins, Tony Conway, Kent Earls, Carrie Edwards, Joe Galanti, Brett James, John Huey, John Marks, Bill Main, E.B. McFarland, Jim Ed Norman, Shred Robinson, Jeff Stevens, and Troy Tomlinson, as well as Jody Williams and Chris Young. Thank you all for joining us today. I'd also like to acknowledge members of the Country Music Hall of Fame, who I'm sure are anxious to see who will be joining their ranks this year. If you would please stand. Joining us today, I believe, are Bobby Bear, Joe Bonzel, Bonnie Brown, William Lee Golden, and Joe Walker Metter. Additionally, I'd like to recognize and thank the Country Music Hall of Fame's Board of Directors for the incredible work you do preserving the history of our genre for future generations. CMA created the Country Music Hall of Fame in 1961 to present the highest honor in the format to country music artists and industry luminaries who've had the most significant impact on this musical art form that's so uniquely American. The first three plaques to grace these walls honored Hank Williams, Fred Rose, and Jimmy Rogers. Since then, this hallowed hall has grown to 127 members. Today, we're elated to welcome three more country music icons to this illustrious circle. Inductees today will be announced in three categories, modern era, veterans era, and the rotating category for non-performer. The individuals we announce today will be formally inducted during the traditional invitation only medallion ceremony later, in the, later this year in the CMA Theater. At this time, I'd like to introduce the CEO of the Country Music Hall of Fame and Museum, Mr. Kyle Young. Thank you, Sarah. And good morning. Welcome to Country Music's Temple, the Hall of Fame Rotunda. This is a morning where hopes are ratified and when hard work is affirmed. It's one of the highlights of our year, of the country music year, and I'm happy to join our friends and colleagues from the CMA on such a bright and brilliant occasion. In a few months, these bronze plaques will be joined by new members in the Hall of Fame. Today, we will recognize an uncommon group of legends. We will cheer their remarkable contributions. We'll welcome them into our most sacred circle. I marvel at the contributions of these three pathfinders who make up the class of 2016. These artists, and they are all truly artists, came along in different eras and specialized in different things, but they each arrived with inventive, highly individualistic, creative approaches. They ran against the grain of history, and in doing so, they created their own indelible historical marks. The class of 2016 Country Music Hall of Fame inductees. Thank you for being with us on this happy, happy morning. Sarah. And now the fun begins. To announce our 2016 Country Music Hall of Fame inductees, we turn to someone who's a beloved member of the artistic community of Nashville. She's a former member of the CMA Board of Directors, a member of both the Country Music and the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. Please welcome a passionate supporter of CMA and Country Music, Ms. Brenda Lee. Thank you so much and good afternoon. Are you excited? Yeah. Not quite as much as I am because I know what this moment means. And uh, you know, when you have a dream as a child uh, and you finally realize what dreams mean and that they can come true, in our industry, this is one we're always afraid to dream. Uh, and that's why it makes it so special when it happens. So, each year, the announcement of the new Country Music Hall of Fame inductees 
is always a cause for celebration. This year's class features three individuals who are revered for their respect of country music's deep traditions, but are equally regarded for forging their own unique paths, taking the industry in new directions and making new fans for country music around the world. We'll begin with the non-performer inductee. Born July the 26, 1931 in rural North Carolina, he took over the family farm at age 15 when his father died. Two years later, he left for Washington, D.C., resolving to be anything but a farmer. He began to write songs while working as a hotel car hop. His first job in the music business was as a record store clerk, and his early work involved promotion and distribution. He began recording local acts on the side, even helping future Hall of Fame member Jimmy Dean cut some early tracks. He joined Mercury Records in 1953 and eventually became head of National Country Promotion. But after making his first trip to Nashville to determine why country sales were flat, he clashed with executives over the direction of the label sound, which he felt was antiquated in the age of rockabilly. During his short tenure at ABC Paramount in 1956, he acquired the master to the label's first million seller, A Rose and a Baby Ruth by George Hamilton IV. He also signed Rock and Roll Hall of Fame member Lloyd Price to the label. And soon after, he started his own label, Monument Records, a, no a nod to the nearby Washington Monument and publishing house Combine Music in 1958, and used those earnings from the company's first hit song, Billy Grammer's Gotta Travel On to move to Nashville two years later. Within a decade, our non-performer, inductee's fearless musical taste, helped launch the iconic careers of Country Music Hall of Fame members Chris Christopherson, Dolly Parton, and Willie Nelson, while also writing an important chapter in rock and roll's music history. He cemented his place in music history with the signing of the great Roy Orbison. Their recordings remain towering achievements and inspired a legion of future rock and roll stars, including the Beatles and a young Bruce Springsteen. He sold Monument and Combine in 1990 but has continued to produce music, winning a Grammy for his work on Willie Nelson and Ray Price's Last of a Breed in 2008. He was inducted into the Musicians Hall of Fame in 2000, and along with his friends Christopherson and Nelson, received the prestigious Del Franklin Award from Leadership Music in 2010. He received the Trustees Award for his contributions to music from the recording, the recording Academy earlier this year. Please welcome Hall of Fame Class of 2016 inductee, Fred Foster. I thought this day would never come would be an understatement. Uh, you don't dream about things like this. If you're involved in country music in any way, and you were inducted into the Hall of Fame, you can't get any higher or any better than that. You're at the top of the mountain. And I have to say the view is very good from up here. <laughs> and I want to thank Brenda for that wonderful introduction, which I don't know that I deserve all that, but she made it sound good. And I thank her for that, I think. All of the CMA members that voted for me. Uh, I give you a promise now that I will continue to work with country music people 
and for country music wherever I am. I think country is the real deal. The rest of it, you know, some of it's good and some isn't, but country music has been my life for, well, a lot of years. I won't say how many. <laughs> But anyway, I want to thank all the uh, people at the, the CMA here. When they called me, uh, Virginia called me, no, sorry, Sarah called me, and I said uh, that I was being inducted, and I said, okay, who's the joker that put you up to this? <laughs> but you know, I've always been a big dreamer, but this, this is too big. You wouldn't dream this unless you were crazy. Uh, I'm just honored beyond belief, and I'm truly honored to be coming into the hall with two of the greats, Charlie Daniels and Randy Travis. Uh, so, I don't know what it would be like not to have this moment. I know one thing, it is the most special one I've ever had in my career in the business. And I thank everyone involved. And I hope I'll continue for a while yet. And I thank you all so much. Well, since Fred has let the cat out of the bag, y'all can all go home. <laughs> oh, Lord, help us. Um, as I told the, our next inductee, <laughs> today is, is not a dream. It's called validation. So, this next young man was born October the 28th, 1936, in Wilmington, North Carolina. This inductee's musical roots were informed by Pentecostal gospel, local bluegrass bands, and the seemingly conflicting sounds of Nashville's WSM and WLAC, Nashville's country and former R&B stations, whose signals carried across the Appalachians. Those four sounds combined to create rock and roll around the world. He graduated high school in 1955. Already proficient at fiddle, mandolin, and guitar, he formed his first band, the Jaguars. The group stopped in Fort Worth, Texas, on its way to California to record a song with producer Bob Johnston. Nothing much came of that instrumental, which had been picked up by Epic Records for national distribution. But Johnston's friendship would shape our inductee's career in more ways than one in decades to come. In 1964, this inductee and Joy Byers co-wrote It Hurts Me, a 1964 B-side recorded by Elvis Presley. Over the next few years, Johnston tried to convince the multi-instrumentalists to move to Nashville, and in 1967, he took his distinctive bull rider hat, wide beard, and outsized persona to Music City, where he quickly made an impact in the studio. He recorded with musicians as diverse as Al Cooper, the Marshall Tucker Band, and Marty Robbins, and made significant contributions to the historic sessions that yielded Bob Dylan's album, Nashville Skyline. His own infectious sound began to connect with the public with the release of 1974's Fire on the Mountain. The singles, The South's Gonna Do It and Long Haired Country Boy, charted in 1975 at a time of renewed interest in Southern culture and the album went platinum. The peak of this sun pardon me, Run, came in 1979 when he released Million Mile Reflections. 
a title that referred to his band's countless days on the road. The album included the iconic, The Devil Went Down to Georgia, a song that became a cultural phenomenon. Devil went to the top of the charts at Country, peaked at number three on the pop list, and appeared on the soundtrack for Urban Cowboy. Still busy creating music and touring, he released Live at Billy Bob's Texas in 2015. At 79, he logs more than 100 dates a year. But he took time off the road to be here this morning. And it's pretty amazing that he comes in under the veterans category. Because if there ever was a veteran who loved veterans, it's our next inductee, my buddy, Charlie Daniels. 